The Centre Trap Bradley Bartleby was bad. He'd been born bad. Before baby Bradley even left the hospital, he'd bitten the midwife on the bottom, stolen the doctor's stethoscope, and emptied his nappy into his grandmother's handbag. And the older Bradley got, the badder he became. Bradley's parents were immensely rich. They had a huge house with a garden that was big enough to lose an elephant in. They knew that the garden was big enough to lose an elephant in because they'd done exactly that. Bradley had demanded the elephant as a house pet, but treated it so badly that it escaped into the garden and was never seen again. Bradley's parents always gave him what he demanded, not because they thought he deserved it, but because they were terrified of him. Every Christmas, Mr. Bartleby hired a team of secretaries to type up the huge list of presents that his greedy son demanded from Santa Claus. Of course, Santa knew what a beastly bat Bradley was, so he never looked at the list. But that didn't mean that he forgot about Bradley completely. Santa is such a kind-hearted old fellow that he believes no child, even one as bad as Bradley, should go without a Christmas present. So every Christmas morning, Bradley would discover that Santa had left him the same gift. Socks, howled Bradley. Another pair of stupid socks. Never mind, Bradley, dear, cried Mr. and Mrs. Bartleby, as they rushed in with a trolley load of presents. Look, Mummy and Daddy have got you everything you wanted. But I don't want presents from you, roared Bradley. I want presents from Santa Claus like everybody else and he stormed back to his room. The next morning, Mr. and Mrs. Bartleby were alarmed to discover that their son had climbed up inside the living room chimney. They were even more alarmed to discover that Bradley had nailed several sticks of dynamite round the chimney walls. What are you doing? asked Mrs. Bartleby nervously. What does it look like? scowled Bradley. I'm building a trap! A trap, said Mr. Bartleby. A trap for what? For Santa Claus, snarled Bradley. I'm going to catch the fat fool and take every present he's got. Mr. and Mrs. Bartleby were speechless. In a lifetime of badness, this was quite the baddest thing that Bradley had ever tried to do. Mr. Bartleby was the first to come to his senses. Isn't it a little early to be setting a trap, he gasped. It could be a whole year before Santa comes again. Oh, this is only the beginning, scoffed Bradley. It'll take a whole year to finish it all. And he was right. Bradley spent the rest of the winter fixing dynamite inside all the other chimneys. And the spring training tigers, which he stole from the local zoo. He spent the summer fitting guillotines all over the doors and windows and the autumn cutting trapdoors into all the floors. By the time December came round again, Bradley had turned the entire house into one stupendous Santa trap. By Christmas Eve, their home was so dangerous that Mr. and Mrs. Bartleby had moved out into a hotel, leaving Bradley alone in the house. One last thing, said Bradley, as he hung his stocking inside the fireplace. He was certain that Santa wouldn't make it that far, but just to make sure, he tied an invisible tripwire to the stocking. The moment anyone touched it, a large metal cage would drop down from above. No more stupid socks, thought Bradley. This Christmas, I'll get exactly what I want. This Christmas, I'll get the whole lot. But as the evening grew darker, Bradley's eyelids grew heavier. His evil efforts had left him quite exhausted, and he soon fell fast asleep. It was almost midnight when Bradley was awoken by the roar of an angry tiger, whose tail had just been stepped on by an elephant. The house had grown chilly, and when he looked outside, Bradley was surprised to find the garden covered in a thick blanket of snow. Shivering with cold, Bradley decided to light a fire. It was only when the flames began to lick up the chimney that Bradley remembered the dynamite. Boom! Yow! 
The explosion grew gradually right through the living room window and out into the rose bushes below. Cursing loudly, Bradley struggled free of the thorny stems. He had barely caught his breath when six sleek, stripy shapes came bounding towards him out of the snow. Nice pussies, squealed Bradley as he fled back through the rose bushes with the tiger snapping at his heels. The tigers chased Bradley around the garden twice before he was able to lose them by diving into a heap of fresh elephant dung and creep back into the house. Determined not to be caught in any more of his own traps, Bradley took a deep breath and prepared himself before opening the front door. Aha! he cried triumphantly as he leapt clear of the falling guillotine. Ah! he cried miserably as he fell through the trap door. Sometime later, as the sun rose on Christmas morning, a scratched, scraped, and badly bruised Bradley limped back into the living room. There wasn't much of the fireplace left, but amazingly, his stocking was still hanging up. And even more amazingly, Bradley could see that there was something inside. Bradley hobbled over, tore down the stocking and... Clang! The metal cage dropped right over him. Bradley let out a long sigh. He knew that he was beaten, so he slumped down inside the cage and emptied his stocking onto the floor. For the first time ever, Santa had left Bradley more than one present. There was a big box of bandages, a large jar of antiseptic, and a nice new pair of socks. Well, children, I hope you enjoyed that reading of the book, The Santa Trap. And just remember, I want milk and cookies. And I can't say I'll be seeing you Christmas Eve because, of course, you'll be in bed. But be assured that I'll be there. Merry Christmas.